Hey gang, it's JC and this is the Daily Dose for Monday, May 14th, 2012, a combined venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Clayton. We have great television archives up top. We have our JC Eye Candy feature below and down in the corner, the results of our rock and roll poll. Here we are at the pool again. <laughs> Seems like we've been here before, huh? All right, let's do the poll question here. Yesterday was Mother's Day, and how do you rate your mother? That was our question. 76% of you said, I have a terrific mom. Congratulations, that's great. I didn't have the luxury of being able to answer in that regard, but that's a whole separate story for another edition of The Daily Dose. 16% of you said she meant well, but she didn't always make the right choices. 7% say she screwed me up the rest of my life, and only 2% said she was really out there a lot of the time. Anyhow, regardless, hope you had a nice Mother's Day yesterday, and off we go. All right, Stan Kroenke wants a retractable dome at the Edward Jones Dome. He wants to be able to a nice day is open it up. Uh, that'll make the team better, huh? All right, so what do you think of that idea of the retractable dome uh, downtown? A, if that's what it takes to keep the Rams in St. Louis, do it. B, he's stalling while he sees how his L.A. options pan out. C, it's ridiculous and unreasonable. Or D, at least then you'd be able to get a tan while watching the Rams lose. Please answer down in the corner. We'll have results for you on Friday. For the interim period here, until we sort of figure out what's going on next, we will have the Daily Dose updated on Mondays and Fridays. Speaking of Friday, I'm returning to the airwaves. That's right. Brian McKenna has asked me to help fill in for Kevin Slayton on KFNS 590 AM on Friday from 3 until 6. So a, a reuniting of me with Brian McKenna been a long time since he and I have done a radio show together, but we'll be on the air on this Friday, that is this Friday from 3 until 6 in the afternoon on 590 The Fan KFNS. This was to have begin, uh, was supposed to be the beginning of my 29th year in St. Louis. It still is, it's just not that I have a, you know, don't have a broadcast facility to uh, operate from, but this is the beginning of our 29th year. I've told this story a million times, please indulge me, but I was sitting in Buffalo, New York, and uh, I had lost my job there and was making <laughs> just a ridiculously small amount of money living in this uh, little uh, town up there. Although, you know, when I went back, I went back about two years ago and just sort of saw the old place, hadn't been there in 25 years, and it looked a little better and then the rain came the next day and it reminded me of how much I didn't like it there, but that's neither here nor there. So um, I, I had sent uh, tapes of the show out to radio stations and consultants and general managers and program directors and everything. And I got this call from this guy in uh, Indianapolis who was running the situation here in St. Louis. And he said, how do you feel about St. Louis? I said, I've never been to St. Louis in my life. Now I've heard St. Louis radio but I've never been to St. Louis, but you know, I'm out here, I'm out east, I'm a Midwestern guy, I'd love to come back to the Midwest, and so why don't you fly me in, let's talk about it. They flew me in, I left Buffalo, it was cold, I got here, it was 86 degrees, they uh, stuck me, this is all May of 1984, they stuck me in the airport Marriott for three days, and they said, we just want you to sit here and listen to the radio here in St. Louis, and then tell us what you think, we want to know how you think you would do here. So that's what I did. I sat in the hotel for three days and then they picked me up. We went to a Chinese restaurant on Watson Road. Again, all this very early in May of 1984. They, uh, they, they seemed amused by the fact that I told them I thought we could take the town over. And I said, I, you know, we could take this town over in a year, year and a half. And I was wrong. We took it over in six months. <laughs> <laughs> and along the way, we had some good laughs and, uh, and made a lot of money and uh, uh, had some terrific experiences. And uh, we'll talk more about that as we get deeper into the 29th anniversary of JC's arrival here in St. Louis. All right, let's move on with the news of the day. Of course, the world is coming to an end tonight because Howard Stern uh, is going to be on your TV on America's Got Talent. And uh, we'll just see how all that plays out. Anyhow, Whitney Houston's family is apparently getting a reality show. The Houston Chronicles will debut sometime later this year on Lifetime. That's the crazy Dionne Warwick. This woman is insane, and she's crooked, and she's mean, and she's no damn good, folks. Dionne Warwick busted a Miami airport uh, for trying to sneak 11 joints onto a plane in her lipstick case. That was a couple of years back. 
Then uh, in 2007, she made news when she made the IRS list of the top 250 delinquent taxpayers. She had $2.6 million in unpaid taxes. And then, of course, she had the Psychic Friends Network back in the 80s. This was fronted by Dionne War Warwick. And, and she basically was uh, appealing to other members of her race, black people, and just uh, taking their money taking their money and saying, oh, we have a bunch of psychics here, and these are black psychics, so they're more tuned into you. And I'm thinking to myself, man, is there anything worse than a rich, successful black woman stealing money from other black people? That just makes me sick. When she was on that show Solid Gold back in the early 80s, they had to treat her like she was some sort of a damn royalty or something. It really bugged the crap out of me. All right, um, they're doing what are called upfronts out in Los Angeles the next couple of weeks. The upfronts are when the networks invite all of the reporters who do entertainment, newspapers, and TV, and stuff like that. And they invite them out to California, and they let them know what shows are being canceled, what shows are being renewed, and what sort of new things they have coming up. And NBC is doing it right now. They have revealed that they're going to do two sessions of The Voice next year, one in the fall and one in the spring. They have a bunch of new shows, a new Matthew Perry thing, a miserable sportscaster who returns to work after losing his wife in a car accident. The uh, show is called Go On. Uh, I knew a guy who, uh, who that happened to. Uh, I wonder if it's his story. A guy by the name of Don Geronimo, who was uh, working in the Washington, D.C. area. He's in Sacramento now. And his wife got killed in a car crash. I wonder if it's. I wonder if he sold them that story. That's interesting. I should check on that. He and I used to be friends and had a falling out. The New Normal is another new show. Ryan Murphy, the guy behind Glee. This is a sitcom about a gay male couple and their surrogate. Uh oh, here we go. Animal Practice stars Justin Kirk from Weeds. Guys with Kids. Jesse Bradford from The West Wing. Jimmy Fallon created the show. Anthony Anderson from Law and Order, Jamie Lynn Siegler from The Sopranos, Save Me, new comedy with Anne Heche, 1600 Pen, a comedy about the U.S. president and his family, Bill Pullman, who of course played the president in Independence Day, Next Caller, Dane Cook, one of the most talentless people in Hollywood, basically doing like a Howard Stern type character, Revolution, a drama from the creator of Lost, J.J. Abrams, Chicago Fire, a drama about firefighters, duh. Uh, what else we got here? And then, and then I'm skipping through all that stuff. After 10 seasons, CSI has been canceled by CBS. That's the CSI Miami one. That one was sort of silly. The original CSI and CSI New York have been renewed, and CBS bringing back two and a half men. ABC has renewed one of their shows with a vulgar title and axed another. Bleep, my dad says. Lasted only one season on CBS. ABC did review. I'm uh, sorry, renew the uh, Don't Trust the Bee in Apartment 23. That one's coming back. All right, tonight, some great television. Inside the Actors Studio, one-hour special presentation. The cast and creator of Mad Men. Also, as we said, Howard Stern on America's Got Talent, seventh season premiere. And American Masters. I can't wait for this. Uh, Johnny Carson, King of Late Night. They're bringing back uh, David Letterman, Jerry Seinfeld, Don Rickles, Ray Romano, Ellen DeGeneres, Clips, of Johnny with uh, Ed McMahon, Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, a two-hour retrospective from 8 until 10 tonight on Channel 9 Public Broadcasting here in St. Louis. That should be a great show. Next month, ABC will air a three-hour special on Nick Walenda's attempt to tightrope the walk over Niagara Falls. If he doesn't make it, he's probably going to die. As a matter of fact, they're going to have a 10-second delay because if he falls, they don't want people to see this. And it's the only reason people watch this, though, to see if the guy's going to fall. All right, Mick Jagger hosting Saturday Night Live this coming weekend. That's the season finale. And this is sort of funny, but in a really, really sad, sick way. Back in 2010, the Pentagon felt like it was making and conducting too many studies. So they commissioned a study on whether or not they were doing too many studies. It's ridiculous, but it gets worse. The Government Accountability Office just ran a study on that study to figure out if there were too many studies. There's no word on how much all of these studies cost, but everybody's having fun with this one. Fun, as I said, in a really sort of sick, sorry way. All right, 11 days to the Memorial Day weekend, poolside, and 34 days until Father's Day. And I hope you saw that piece last night on 60 Minutes that did a great segment on Gary Sinise from Forrest Gump and all the money he's raising for all these seriously injured soldiers 
who come back from these wars. He's got the lieutenant band out there and playing gigs all over the country, and people are just being knocked out by this. A couple of years ago, ran into Gary Sinise, the press box at Wrigley Field in Chicago, and we got a great picture, so that's JC's eye candy. It's right below what you're looking at right now. All right, what do you think of Stan Kroenke's idea, his demand for a retractable roof at the Edward Jones Dome? Please answer in the corner. We'll have results for you on Friday. And again, a reminder, it's JC and Brian McKenna, special edition of the Afternoon Show, 3 to 6 on KFNS this Friday on 590 The Fan. That's it. Uh, JC's Daily Dose for Monday, May 14th. 2012, a combined venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Clayton. There is a pool waiting for me. Yeah, they really showed me, didn't they? Spend the summer at the pool. Uh, that's it. JC's Daily Dose for Monday, May 14, 2012, a combined venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Clayton. I think I said that, yeah. But I think I've been here before, too. In the meantime, we've beaten this one to death. Have a good one. See you later. Bye. <laughs>